Good morning, kids. I am coming to you once again this week to read you a story. Um, I hope you're enjoying your week. It is a beautiful, hot week out there, so I hope you are getting outside and playing and maybe doing a little swimming. The book that I'm going to read to you is called Twice Yours, and it's a parable of God's gifts. What are you carving, Grandpa? Corey asked as he climbed into the porch swing and sat beside his grandfather. Something for you. For me, what is it? Something to help you remember who you are. Corey washed his grandfather's hands. They were big and brown and they knew just what to do with a piece of wood and a pocket knife. This piece of wood reminds me of something that happened a long time ago. I was about your age. Tell me, Grandpa, tell me a story. Corey leaned back against Grandpa's shoulder and waited for him to begin. For weeks, a boy worked to make a lovely little sailboat. Carefully, he carved the boat out of balsa wood, forming the bow, the stern, the hull, and the rudder. Then he searched through the scraps of material his mother had given him until he found the perfect fabric to make the sail. When every piece was put together and the paint and glue were finally dry, the boy cut a long piece of string and tied it to the back of the boat. After school the next day, the boy hurried home. Gently, he picked up his sailboat and ran down the road to the stream that flowed through the town. Kneeling at the edge of the creek, the boy placed his sailboat in the water. Holding the end of the string tightly in his hand, he pushed the boat out toward the middle of the stream. The boat floated out away from the bank, away from the boy. When it reached the middle of the stream, it was pulled into the fast-moving current. The boy watched with joy as the boat sailed over rocks and past the roots of trees. We're sailing, he cried, running along beside his homemade boat. Every day, the boy came back to the creek and sailed his boat and pulled it back to shore, and sailed his boat and pulled it back to shore. One day when the boy was running along the stream bank beside his homemade sailboat, the string broke. Wait, stop, come back, little boat, he cried. But the boat just sailed on down the stream and out of sight. Every day the boy walked up and down the creek bank searching for his boat. He was hoping that maybe it had washed up onto the bank or perhaps had become stuck behind a rock. One day, while searching for his beloved boat, the boy went farther downstream than he ever had before. He followed the creek through a grove of pine trees and under a footbridge. Suddenly, he saw up ahead a little boy playing with a boat. When he got closer, he saw that it was his own homemade boat. The paint was chipped and the sail was torn, but still, he recognized it as his own. That's mine, he shouted, running up to the other boy and reaching to grab the boat out of his hands. No, it's not. It's mine. I found it. No, it's mine. I made it, but I lost it. Now give it back. Finders keepers, losers weepers, said the other boy, still holding tightly to the boat. I'll trade you for it. What do you have? The boy reached inside his pockets and pulled out everything he had. I have some string, two bottle caps, three marbles, a rubber snake, and a pocket knife. Well, said the other boy, how much of that will you give me for the sailboat? I'll give you everything I have, the boy replied. You can have it all. It's a deal, exclaimed the other boy, dropping the sailboat and reaching for the string, the bottle caps, the marbles, the rubber snake, and the pocket knife. The boy picked up his sailboat and walked back upstream under the footbridge, through the grove of pine trees, and back to the place where he had first launched his sailboat. You're twice mine, he said, hugging the boat tightly to his chest. Once because I made you, and once because I bought you. Grandpa finished the story and whittled the last piece from his block of wood. Then he handed the carving to Corey. It was a cross. This is for you, Corey. It will remind you of the one who made you and then bought you. What do you mean, Grandpa? Jesus wanted you for his own. He created you to bring him joy. 
and then he paid for you, not with marbles and bottle caps and a pocket knife, but with something far more precious. He gave everything he had. He paid for you with his life. Corey clutched the cross in his hands. Thank you, Grandpa. That's the best story ever. Grandpa closed his knife and put it in his pocket. Yes, it is, Corey. Indeed, it is. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18-20 through 20. You know that you were not bought with things that can pass away like silver or gold. Instead, you were bought by the priceless blood of Christ. He was chosen before God created the world, but he came into the world in these last days for you. And what a beautiful gift that is that God has given us, that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins because he loved us so much. I hope you have a beautiful week this week, and I can't wait to see you hopefully on Sunday. 